What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Sakina, and I'm back with another review. This is my review for The Real Housewives of New York. And this is season 15, episode 5. So, let's go ahead and get into it. It opens up with Sai getting some plants, you know, uh, some parsley, basil, those type of things for her husband because she's been running up a check down at Whole Foods and she said organic living is very expensive. Trust me, I know because... Like I said in a previous video, I do try to get everything as organic as possible. And yes, it's definitely a pricey task. So she started her own garden. We learned that they actually have a home upstate. So they still have their town home in the city. And then on the weekends and I think during the summer, I think that's what she said. They go to the house upstate. That's essentially what her husband wants to be. But of course, y'all know she is a New York girl through and through. And she's like, no, I'm city living forever so they talk about her aunt coming into town and how loving she is with the family and things like that and then that prompts them to talk about Sai's mom she has her ashes in a shopping bag and she was like it's time to take her out put her in an urn upstate because before her mom passed she was able to experience their upstate home and she loved it and so they're going to have her in an urn there and then her husband was like she should also be put in a small urn and like plant a tree for her out there which is a good idea um i feel like i don't know because i got my granny's ashes and i did keep them in a bag for a little bit i did and shout out to my mom i've shared this story before but for christmas maybe like two three years ago my mom got me a small i'm looking at it right now a small urn urn uh for my granny's ashes and so i do feel like you should definitely especially if you love your loved one if you have their ashes put it in an urn do something special for them because yeah just keeping them in a in a bag mm -mm. no bueno moving on to jessu she's planning her birthday party i don't know how old she is but it's clueless themed clueless is one of her favorite movies so she has outfit changes and stuff like that and she's talking to Pavit about it he doesn't know anything about clueless he's never watched it um he's more like of a star trek star wars type of guy but he was raised in la so just was like how do you not know about this i mean honestly i've seen clueless before but i cannot go back and you know recite movie scenes or anything like that so don't come for me i just haven't seen it. i have i've seen it but i just haven't seen it over and over and over again honestly my brother has watched clueless way more than i have but my brother is really into movies and stuff more than me um but yeah my favorite type of movies are biopics so the jackson american dream temptations you know that that type of thing those are those are my speed but yeah whatever uh probably you ain't you ain't that alone okay i didn't sing it but whatever so she like look just make sure that you give me a nice expensive gift okay nothing from chinatown because remember she did let us know that she used to be down at chinatown before she got on so he said he can't promise that and he had those meta glasses on technology is advanced i just don't see me sporting that around my eye because i mean it's bad enough that we look at cameras uh, I mean cameras, but we look at um, phone screens, laptop screens, TV screens. We have all these screens around us. And then to have it like literally on our eyes is just like, it's too much for me. It's it's an all, but hey, if it were for Pavi, have it. We get a little peek into Jenna's life. She's the chief editor, I think she said, of this online brand. She's now in the office every day. Basically because she can't really fully commit to it because she has two other jobs. She still has her lash line and then she has um, another position. I forgot what it was. But sis is booked and busy. So we got to see her, you know, having thrown some ideas around with the ladies in the office. And they were talking about doing things for Pride and then uh, doing things for Black History Month. But she wants to make it known that they want to be inclusive year round, not just, you know, on those specific months. And you have one of the, uh, I don't know if it was the, it was just the team, I think. But Anne, Anna, beautiful, only black woman in the office. I said, I wonder how her work experience is. Very captivating. Of course, my eyes went straight to her. I mean, it's very normal too. Anytime you just see the only black person, it's like, you know how we do. We all gravitate towards each other. Um, but, you know, she got to speak her speech and stuff. 
they're bouncing ideas off of each other. They want to do something about clowns in LA and throw throughout the idea and uh throughout the idea of having or I uh, I guess like developing a story about how they have eyebrow transplants in Turkey. Kind of similar to like the men's scalp. The 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 hair transfers. That's interesting. I guess that'll be good for like um Maybe people what alopecia maybe I'm not sure. Um Oh goodness gracious. Um uh, one of my friends had just text me. We were supposed to link up this weekend. Which I honestly forgot about. But yeah. Anywho, y'all, I have been very, very social lately, okay? So the energy might be a little low because of that um, on top of work. Work is very busy, and I'm doing this review on lunch. Um, we had, what? On Tuesday, I went out with some of my old coworkers. Um, where did we go? We went, you know, had a little taco Tuesday thing, so we went to a... Uh, taco spot and then after that we went to a house taco Tuesday night one of my uh, co-workers friends had something so we went over there didn't get into the house until 2 30 then I had to you know clock into work I didn't go straight to bed so I went to bed at like probably three something um had terrible sleep woke up on Tuesday I mean on Wednesday which was yesterday and I was like yeah no I checked my work schedule I had three meetings who who I said, yeah, no, uh-uh, I got to go, boo. So I did my team meeting, and after that, I clocked out. I was not there for the two-hour training, and then we had another uh, team meeting. I said, yeah, no, I can't do it. Now, today, which I did not know, we have two meetings today. So we have, like, a two-hour meeting. Oh, my gosh. we have It's like a, it's an hour-and-a-half meeting. Where they talk about numbers and stuff like that. And then I have a two hour training. So please just. Be with me today. Y'all the energy already low. Cause then last night I went to my friend's house. And we had you know like a little Halloween thing. Where we just you know. Drank on some fall cocktails. And we watched Hocus Pocus too. But your girl was tired. So I fell asleep. So here I am again. I'm gonna have to run Hocus Pocus too bad. Because at the end. All my friends was like, oh my gosh, it was so good. It was so good. I fell asleep, so I don't even know what happened. So, yeah, and then here we are today trying to make it work. So, that's the reason why this review didn't come out yesterday because I was like, yeah, baby, I got to focus on me. I got to do me. I got to do me, okay? Anywho, what was we saying? Yeah, Jenna out here booked and busy and doing the damn thing. Now, we move on to Uba, who actually invited Raquel over to her house. In this scene, I actually appreciate Like, I really enjoy watching this because I realize that Uba and Raquel, they have, you know, things in common. They have similarities. Um, them coming from model backgrounds. I think Uba still models, but we know that Raquel, she got an early start in modeling. Um, them relating to being the only, um, or typically, you know, the only black model starting out because that's what it was back then it was just always you know a token situation they were purposely not hiring black models so they have that in common and then they also have um artistry uh they raquel has is an art curator and then um uba she creates art she's a painter uh it's not something that she does you know for money this is just a hobby of hers a passion of hers and she does beautiful work she does really beautiful work a lot of it is floral she says sometimes she does it by paint. Sometimes she does it by her hand. She wants it to be when she's in a happy mood. And it's really beautiful. She even talks about this uh, flag painting that she did. And it's in representation of, you know, the U.S. And so the, the painting is gold roses. And then the stripes are black and white. It's a representation of how she views the states. You know, we are the land of the free. She thinks that this country is beautiful because we have so much freedom compared to the background that she grew up in and she feel like look the citizens we need to get it together so we don't mess up mess it up for the immigrants because they are grateful to be here like you know every country has their cons but for immigrants it really is you know a different experience for them because of where they typically come from uh they typically come here because they're running from 
you know, whatever. Um, not whatever, not trying to like downplay, but just, you know, whatever it is that they're running from, they're trying to get away from to have a better life here. Um, we learned that she was actually, Uba got her start in Canada and then she ended up signing to an agency and she got moved here, uh, to the state. So that's how she got her break in New York. And then they get into the whole Hampton situation. The whole reason that Uba invited Raquel over was so she could see another side of her because she's aware of how she was acting in the Hamptons and stuff. But she said that Bryn is very condescending. Even when they had to talk the night before that breakfast, Bryn was condescending. And I believe Uba because remember Uba said that Bryn grabbed her face and was like, learn how to use your words and you know calling her boo boo and you're so beautiful but the way that you're acting i don't want them to give you the angry black woman edit and so she didn't really take kindly to that because she feels like bren i'm acting this way because of the way that you're treating me like you're triggering me to act this way and raquel felt like okay so you feel like bren is manipulating you okay with that let me clear something up Yes, I do think that Uba is confrontational. I do. I thought that I started feeling that way last season, at the end of last season, when they went on the cash trip and she took Aaron's glasses off of her face and all of that. I felt like the way that she behaved was too much. And then it started to come over into this season because one thing I will say is that Oh, but you inserted yourself in the issues that you have with, in the issue that Cy has with Brent. Now, granted, Brent did say something about you having a man last season, but if y'all haven't moved on, then I need you to make it clear that that's the reason why you don't fool with her. Because the way you hopped into Cy's issue with Brent, you started that. And it, it seems very unwarranted, but it's like, okay, you have a deeply rooted issue from last season that you're not over. So, yes, you are being confrontational with Brynn. And it's like, girl, this is not even your fight. You want to be size representative and nobody asked you to do that. Just be a, a, a listening ear to side. But to, like, insert yourself and be, you know, all up in arms and start stuff with Brynn. It's like, girl, where is all of this coming from? Because even at the breakfast... It seemed like y'all were in a good place and then it went left because you kind of took it there. But I went on your, I was on your side once I heard the conversation that you and Brent had and then the way that Brent continued to speak to you within that breakfast con uh, conversation. But really, you are the one that started it. So I could be honest with that. I was uh, side on you at first at the breakfast because you went left with your tone and everything. But then I'm like, oh, bitch. I don't like the way that Brent is talking to you. I don't like the words that's coming out her mouth. I'm not on board with that. So I can I can get mad at somebody. I can see them as a problem, but also be on their side at the same time if I feel like, you know, what was being played out is not okay. So yeah, I just wanted to make that clear because some people in the comments was like, the Uber's a problem. How do you not see that blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, no, I can agree with her on this whole Brent thing, but I can also say that, yes, she does sometimes do the most. Two things can be true at the same time. All right. So, um, yeah, Raquel wants Uber to talk it out with, um, what's her name? With Brynn, but Uber has no interest. And I know y'all probably like, why the hell are you crying, girl? And that's because I end up going over to Sai's scene too. And I forgot to touch on that little part with Uwa. But Sai is at her upstate house with her aunt and her kids and her husband. And she's, uh, you know, the house is being renovated. But she says she's taking her time with it. She wants to pick up items and things that she's gotten during her travels. Like she's just being very intentional with it. And so they go outside and it's time for them to plant the tree for her mom and she can't open the box she's having a hard time so her aunt does it for her and you know she grabs the ashes by her hands and her aunt gets really emotional about it and you know they sprinkle the ashes in the hole where they're going to plant the tree and her aunt is saying nice things about you know how much she loves her sister and stuff and as she's talking the kids get emotional and they cry about it. The little boy said that he said that his grandma passed. 
And it's so sad. And it actually brings tears to my eyes, y'all. I've been very um, unemotional lately. And as somebody that is, you know, a water sign, I'm fairly emotional about a lot of things. And I have not been. I even talked about it in therapy. And I'm wondering why typical, typical things that will make me cry, I'm not getting emotional about. Of course, the the sadness is there, but I'm so used to crying and it's it's like the the tears are not forming or anything and, and it makes me wonder like why am I not crying? But you know, it just I'm just at this place where I'm not really allowing things to get me so emotionally there. It's not like I'm cutting off my emotions, but I have been very my stress levels have been regulated, like I haven't been stressed out or anything and I've like I said I've been more social with my friends and you know intentional with hanging around them granted work is a lot work baby we had a pop-up meeting today too and so it's like work is a lot but I'm not allowing that to stress me out either and um you know family all that stuff I've literally just been very like it is what it is and also heavy on I don't care and like really not caring about it and just focusing on me. So maybe that's the reason why. But I watched this scene and I actually got emotional and it like it kind of stunned me a little bit because I just feel like I haven't been crying about a lot of stuff. So, yeah, it was a beautiful scene. Um, <laughs> after they planted the tree, you know, her aunt is comforting everybody inside. It's like she wiping her up. Uh, my mama ashes on everybody. It was funny, but... Yeah, it was a very touchy scene. Now, we get this scene where Jessel invites Brent and Erin out to do some shopping, I guess, for her birthday and stuff. Brent saying that it's very ironic that Jessel will have a clueless party. I'm like, okay, but you act clueless too, so. Okay. You, you're you fitting the theme too. But anyway, um, they sit down after trying out some clothes and... Aaron brings up that Sai and Jenna were together earlier that day. They do a flashback to the ladies having dinner and talking about how Sai um, put some ashes in, you know, a tree for her mom. And then Aaron is telling the girls she's so fake. She doesn't want to be friends with Jenna now because Jenna is hanging with Sai, somebody who was telling all of New York that she couldn't stand her. Meanwhile, Jenna hasn't reached out to Erin, you know, to check on her to see what she has going on or anything like that. Erin, you fake. You real fake. Because you've been smiling in, in her face and everything else in Jenna's face. But like I said, you still pressed about that money and you ain't said nothing to Jenna about it. So now all of a sudden, because she hanging with Sai, you have a problem with that. Why? Like, you'll be mad if Uber pulled the same thing with you and no longer wanted to be friends with you. Meanwhile, you run around town with Brynn. And you're the same one who said last week, stop, you're, you're giving them what they want when Brynn was doing all that crying and all that stuff. But Uber's supposed to be your good, 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 good friend. Yeah, at this point, Aaron, you 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 getting chopped because really, I don't be as bothered with Aaron as a lot of people. I do like her at times, you know. For the mo for, let me say, for the most part, I do like her, but I am starting to see that girl, you're fake, you're fake, and you need to be asking Jenna for that money. Another thing too, okay, if she want to hang out with Sai and they squash their beef. Then what is you still mad for? Because I can't stand a person that's like that. If this person has moved on, then you need to move on too. Because, girl, what now what's your beef with Cy, Erin? Oh, gosh. Y'all, my neighbors have their dog outside. Let me see. Uh, can I switch this over? Oh, I can't switch it over. My dog, uh, my neighbor's dog is so bad, y'all. And they got two French dogs, two French bulldogs. And this one, the male dog, he be running out in the middle of the street. If somebody, we live in a cul-de-sac. So if somebody comes up this, you know, cul-de-sac, he will run from their driveway in, in front of the car. I don't know why they let this dog out because they have no control over him. So I guess they was, one of their uh, house members was pulling up 
And of course, he comes jetting out from the driveway. And the lady, her car is literally, y'all probably can't see it. It's literally in the front, parked in the front because she had to hop out the car to put the dog in the house. Like I have a, uh, I would just show like a little quick clip of her car just in the middle of the street because the dog ran out. This should be so crazy. They have no control. Their dog has ran up to our driveway before. Had my mom on top of the car. <laughs> had my mom on top of the hood. She's scared and she. <laughs> because he will chase you. He will chase you and he will chase the car. I'm like, <clears throat> stop letting this dog out in the front yard because y'all have no control. My neighbor got Uber Eats uh, a couple weeks ago and they had the dog in the front yard. The dog literally ran in front of the car almost got hit and then when they finally got the dog out of the way they pulled up into the uh my neighbor's driveway to deliver the food the dog ran back to my neighbor's house and the uber eats person wasn't able to get out the car because the dog like why do y'all keep putting this dog out in the front without a leash it's crazy Anyway, let's get back to what we talking about. I was trying to show y'all so bad. I wish I could have showed y'all so bad. But I didn't think about it just to use my phone. But baby, that dog will run out in front of somebody real quick. I'm like, y'all need to get him together because somebody can easily hit him. I've seen so many times where that dog was going to get hit by a car. Hell, mine included. If I didn't know that dog well enough, I could have easily pulled out the driveway and hit his ass before a book. Because I be knowing he be outside, I be like, let me slow down because I know his ass is out here and he will try it. And he do. So, Brynn is talking about how Uba is just sick and, you know, she does too much. She's tired of hearing her say, no, 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 no. But just at the Hampton's house, you didn't want her mocking you. But you mocking her. You see how that go? You don't want people to talk crazy to you, but you talk crazy to people. You don't want people mocking you. But you mocking them. It don't work like that. And then she had the nerve to say. Sai owes her a written apology. Girl who the fuck are you Bryn? Who are you? Because they even flash back. Where Sai said again. When she sat down with Jenna. A month later. A month ago. She apologized to the group. She reached out to Bryn. She apologized to Bryn separately. Bryn left her on red. Do you want people to kiss your ass? Like, it don't work that way. And then you say that you're open to listening to people's emotions. But when y'all was in the Hamptons, you tried to hurry up and give her a quick apology. And didn't want to tell her what you were sorry for. The same way that you wanted Aaron to give you, or you wanted to give Aaron detail on what she should apologize for. You should have known that that's how you're supposed to apologize. Like, you clearly know what to expect from an apology, but you didn't want to give Sai that. So now you want Sai to kiss your ass when it's like, girl, no, it don't work like that. Sai already done reached out to you before, and now you want another apology for what? Because when she tried to have some type of common ground with you, you didn't want to hear her out. Brent, I, ooh, I'm really, really starting not to like her. And then she was like, Sai is a miserable person who enjoys misery. She's ha she's mad because Brent is happy. And Sai is a troll who lives under the Brooklyn Bridge. We're actually seeing Sai in another light this season. She's actually trying to change. She's being communicative. Whereas you are showing this condescending tone. You're being an asshole. And then, because even when she was talking about Uber in this scene too, she was like, with the whole no, no, no thing, we're grown. We live in New York. Like, we don't do that. New York is a wild ass place. You just heard Sai say she don't feel safe being upstate because she likes to hear the chaos outside, the sirens, the FUs in the, in the morning. New York is a very unreal, unserious place with people who have the most aggressive attitudes and will cuss you out with a quickness are you dumb a saying stems from a whole new yorker like girl what are you talking about stop trying to act like you prestigious and you are prim and proper and you're up here anybody who cusses down here and all that girl stop like you want to try to get on people's behavior all the time and it's like girl who who that and made you queen? Who who gave you the 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 
And then on top of that, it's like, girl, you got so much to say about people, but you're thirsty. Bring you're thirsty. Anytime you see some dick walking by, you don't know how to function. Like, you really teeter on the side of harassing folks, but you always want to talk about people's behaviors. Yours ain't the cleanest, boo. And back to the whole sexual innuendos thing, I really cannot stand people like that. I can't stand people who, like, make reference about something and be like, pause. Or, you know, all that, like, sexual BS that Brent be on. I can't stand stuff like that. Like, I don't want to talk to you. Oh, I'm surprised a piece of Blackberry. But, um, yeah, I can't have conversations with people like that because stop sexualizing everything. Let's just talk. Just fucking talk. What are we talking about? Just talk. Stop being weird. Talk. We get down to Jussel's party and Jussel looks amazing. Hold on. I don't want to be clicking nothing. But Jessel looks amazing. I love her hair being pinned off on the side. I loved her jewelry, loved her outfit. It's pretty, it's pink. She has three other outfit changes. So I'm excited to see what else she's going to wear because she looks really good. Now, Jenna is the first person that arrives and she had never watched Clueless, but she did her research before the party in which I appreciate. And so, you know, the, the style and the aesthetic is not really her speed, um, the outfits and things. So she decides to be the girl's dad, which is more of her speed anyway. Um, and it looked really cute. You know, she had papers that she was uh, serving everybody. So Jessel got served for defamation of a Christmas tree because of the lingerie outfit um, that she got last year. <laughs> uh, I said, look, and that's that's the gift that keep on giving, right? A damn Christmas tree comment. <laughs> so then she gives... Um, Bryn won because Bryn shows up next and she's dressed as Dion and she gets one for um, improper uh, exposure or something like that. And I want to say she gave one to, did she give one to Aaron? I'm not sure, but everybody showed up looking really good. I noticed that Uba didn't get one and Bryn didn't go over to speak to Uba, obviously, but even when just I think Jessel, no, I think Jenna said that she needed to serve her. And she was like, be careful because she doesn't like jokes. Okay. Oh, oh, Aaron did get one for putting the roach, like putting the roach in a pop, pop, pop lava, something that you, I don't know how to name that dessert. But anyway, yes, because Jessel has three different outfit changes, somehow Bryn is feeling like this is performative, this is theatrical, like, who does that? Why are you being negative about the situation? It's very common for people to have outfit changes at birthdays, at dinners. This is not unheard of. Like, I don't understand why she has her nose in the air and an issue with everything all of a sudden. Like, girl, ugh, I, ugh, I can't, I can't. So, Sai gets there. She's dressed as Dion. She looks cute, too. And I want to say that Raquel and Aaron have, like, a similar outfit on, I think. But Aaron and Sai, they sit down. And Aaron is like, Ugh, I just, I just, I just can't stand Jenna. And Sai so is like, well, what's wrong with y'all? I don't know. She just annoys me. Nothing. She just annoys me. Well, you doing all that huffing and puffing. You're very pressed. Speak up or shut the fuck up. Because what you're doing is very fake. So she's saying that she doesn't want to be friends with Jenna anymore. And in her confessional, she's saying she has so much on her plate with her kids. You know, her mom going through breast cancer. Her husband not being supportive in this time. And she really feels like she needs the support of her friends. But she's not giving any grace. But I also think that Erin needs to be more considerate with the situation. Like, if you need support from your friends, speak up. And also keep in mind, everybody's situations and the way that they handle things are different. Jenna, her upbringing was different. Her mom was very closed off. She was not really emotional like that. And so you have to consider your source. She might not do well with death. She might not know how to um, handle your emotions in these times. Like, 
but just speak up and say what you need out of your friends. I'm sure they would have no problem being there for you after you said what you felt like you needed to say. But also, I'm one of those people who don't want to really remind people too much. Like, I'll speak on an issue, but if I see that it's a reoccurring one, I'm not going to keep speaking on it. I already spoke my piece. And once you do start getting in line after I've said it over and over again, I'm going to question whether or not you're being genuine because why do I have to keep reminding you? So I feel like one time is enough and just let it be what it is after that. But all of that, you got this, it, all this pressure that you got for Jenna seems more like projection. It doesn't seem real to me. Like you mad at your husband and everybody else and you just want to throw Jenna in there. But she probably is still mad because she ain't got her a uh, couple hundred dollars either. Uh, Uber joins the conversation. She Uber looks so good. Like that high ponytail, it just brings out her face features. I love a ponytail because a ponytail really just just shows your face. But she looked really pretty. She joined the conversation between Sai and Aaron. And they're like, oh, you talking about Jenna? Well, maybe you should talk to her about it. And Aaron's like, yeah, she don't have any idea. But she don't want to talk to her. So... You have Uber who don't want to talk to Bran. And then you got Aaron who don't want to talk to Jenna. But Jenna is oblivious. She don't know what the hell going on. But you have Jenna and Bran off to the side. And they're having a conversation. And so Bran is like, I'm not going to say too much. But I was with Justin and Aaron yesterday. Uh, Aaron feels some type of way about you being out with Cy. I'm not going to say nothing. That's it. But, you know, just be careful. But if you keep being nice to certain people, then I'm not going to be happy and I'm going to take away our sex. Bring, shut the fuck up. Get out of here. And then she's saying, no, it's, it's cool. Just be careful. No, you meant what you said. That you're not going to be okay if she continues to be friends with Sai and Uber. Let's keep it a buck. But you're not running shit around here. And I appreciated Jenna saying she would rather have her own personal relationship and experiences with Sai and go from there. Like, stop trying to tell me not to be friends with her. Yes, if Sai said that she can't stand her and Jenna decides to move forward and, you know, see where a relationship can go, she's well within her right. Like, stop trying to be on this high school BS. What kind of shit is that? I would have preferred Jenna to say it in Brent's face. Like, no, that's not what we're going to do over here. I'm going to build my own relationship with her and I'm going to figure out if I want to move forward or not. So then you got Brim trying to pressure Rebecca again to drink. And Rebecca in her confessional was like, I find it weird that she is so pressed about me having a drink. And Brim is like, well, I heard from other people that you, you drink with other people. You just don't drink with us. And in her confessional, she's saying that Rebecca is boring. Yes, Rebecca is boring. But at the same time, stop trying to press this woman to be something that she's not. Allow her to be who she is. You doing the most and trying to mold her into uh, some type of reality stunt queen it's too damn much. Girl, go sit the fuck down, Bran. They getting on Jessel because she has on none of the clueless outfits from the actual movie, which I'm not necessarily mad at. Now, I will say it would be, you know, if you're going to be Cher, okay, that's what you're saying that you are, then you should at least have one outfit that shows you know, the thing that fits the theme. I think her outfits thus far, we've seen two. They definitely are on brand for the movie. But I think the first one should have been something from the movie. So, you know, you'll be literally in theme. But, you know, Brand is making everything an issue. Um, speaking of her, she's leaving the party because she has to go get a spray tan. The last appointment was at 940 I mean, I don't do spray tans. <laughs> I'm black. I don't need one. I don't want one because I know that black people do get spray tans. But, um, yeah, I don't know too many uh, salons that are open past nine. But let Brent tell it that was that. And she was like, I don't have time to stick around for your multiple outfit changes. Again, having a negative connotation. And I just really don't understand why. But, okay, Jessel was feeling some type of way about it. But let her go. Because did you notice, once she left, the group finally came together. And that's really the reason why she wanted to leave. Because she beefed out with Sai and Uba. And she didn't want to be around them. So that's the reason why she skipped the party early. You're not slick. I see exactly why you left early. But, yeah, let her go. So they come together. With the exception of um, 
Jenna. And so Erin is telling Raquel her issues with Jenna. Womp, 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 womp. Because at this point, I'm starting to feel like this beef is fake. It's made up. It's one-sided. Jenna don't even know what the hell is going on. At this point, she done heard it from Brynn. And then she heard it from, hey, Erin's husband. He was like, yeah, I feel like there's some tension between you and Erin. Jenna's like, is it? Because again, Jenna or uh, uh, Aaron is bringing it to everybody but Jenna. And so her husband then got caught up with word bombing, saying some shit that he shouldn't have said. And at this point, Jenna comes over, serves Uber her, her papers. And then you have Aaron still talking to Raquel about the issues that she has with Jenna, who was literally in front of her at this point. And Raquel was like, girl, you need to talk to her. And then you hear Uber saying, I'm going to slide over and you you talk to Aaron. Because at this point, yes, what the fuck is we talking about, Aaron? So they finally have a conversation. Aaron is acting real nonchalant. Like, I'm fr I don't want to be friends with you anymore. So Aaron is basically mad because she feels like, oh, Jenna, so you going to go and run with Bryn and follow her around when she then basically made up this lie saying that I said that you had financial issues in which, you know, I told the story about the Hamptons and your car breaking down, but now you want to be buddy-buddy with somebody that you know put 20 on 10. Okay? If you know that Bryn exaggerates stories and you feel like she's trying to get in there good with Jenna and all of this, why are you mad at, at, at Jenna? If you know that Bryn tries to get in between relationships and all of that why are you letting it happen like you're literally calling it out in your confessional but you're letting it affect your relationship with jenna jenna boils all of this down to her just having poor communication she's not the greatest communicator but she said you know maybe she can initiate a few texts and things like that she don't talk to nobody she got three jobs she's booked and busy baby she's not thinking about that like Aaron, you sound stupid. You literally sound stupid. You're literally talking about how Brent is this, Brent is that, Brent is this. How she tries to infiltrate, you know, friendships and all of that. Okay. And I guess you, you're letting her win. If that's the case, you're letting her win because you're now affected by the relationship that you and Jenna have. You keep trying to act like you don't, you don't need her as a friend. Girl, you want her as a friend. Stop trying to act all tough and move the fuck on. Because Jenna really wasn't giving her what she wanted. She was just like, okay. Like, I'm not about to sit here and argue with you at Jessel's party. We not doing that. But they came to some type of resolve. Like, okay, Aaron, shut the fuck up. I don't want to hear nothing about it. Especially if you're not going to ask for your $200. That's what they finally came out with her clueless outfit. It was real cute. She saved the best for last. Just looked good this entire um, episode. And I forgot to even comment about Pavit Child and him asking her what she wanted for her actual birthday. Because her birthday was the next day. And she was like, I was hoping that he would have, you know, had something planned already. And the friends was like, well, maybe he's just acting like he doesn't have anything planned for you. But he actually does. But then in his confessional, he was like, he don't really like holidays because basically it's just a money grab. But I'm like, this is her birthday. This is not Valentine's Day. He referenced Valentine's Day. This is not that. It's not a man-made holiday. This is the day she was born. Like, oh my gosh. Pavit had zero sense of romance. Like... How did he even get Jessel? I'm confused. But anyway, let's get down in the comments and talk. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to my channel, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.